the holy family communication center sakwal presents a documentary on the life of father faustino de souza the founder of the congregation of the sisters of holy family of nazareth A family is a domestic cell of the church. Every newborn is a gift from God and a blessing to the family. Known as father founder, entrusted with a special mission, he was to be the apostle of peace and justice, father of the poor and needy, a refuge to the destitute, a guide and a model. a simple diocesan priest of the archdiocese of goa blessed was the family of romaldo salvador da chagas da souza and preciosa cristalina ludovina de souza on the 24th of november when the second child of the family of seven Four girls and three boys came to birth. The simple and devout parents rejoiced in the birth of their son. Baptized at Saint Michael's Church, Anjuna, on March thirteenth, eighteen ninety-four, with Domingo Xavier de Souza as his godfather, little did the parents know that this child born with a silver spoon in the mouth would pave the path to holiness, unfolding and responding to the plans of the Lord to humanity. From his early childhood he grew up to be a very good boy his parents instilled in him the spirit of piety strict discipline and great charity towards all his neighbors darkness and sorrow befell the family as father faustino's father passed away at the age of 43 his mother took the sole responsibility to bring up her children with ability and determination and she commended her children to the virgin mother of god accompanying them to church every day and particularly for the sacraments Father Faustino by his hard work excelled in his studies he was very fond of religious practices and showed keen enthusiasm to take part in the parish activities by dint of hard work and study he pleased his mother and teachers and got permission to join the special school for candidates to priesthood in Mapsa Auliash Filiash he completed the study of latin and of sacred theology at Rashol seminary his superiors were very pleased with his studies spiritual life and general behavior i am a priest of god not only your son mama Please let me go. As a deacon, he put himself to the service of the sick, administering to their physical and spiritual to the point of exhaustion. He even helped to bury the dead. On 6th April 1919, Father Faustino was ordained priest at the Pilar Monastery by Dom Sebastião Jos Pereira, Bishop of Daman, and celebrated his first mass at St Michael's Church Anjuna 
May 3rd, 1919 You are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek. Father Faustino's first assignment was as the assistant to the parish priest of San Diego's church, Mondegiri. There was no residence, but still, he left indelible footprints in the hearts of the people there. It was Father Faustino's practice to gather the children on the hillock, organize games, tell stories, and also teach catechism. He made himself available to help the parish priest in pastoral work are the words of Pasquale de Mello, one of the residents of the Briars ward. Very soon he was appointed as the chaplain of the St. Francis Xavier at Dulay. Here Father Faustino stayed alone on this hillock which was full of snakes. He toiled hard, clearing the place of all thick growth, leveling the ground, filling the ditches and planting a large number of trees. Young boys and girls came to help him. Life is not a bed of roses. He had accusations from the people, but he did not give up hope and trust in the Lord. He saw these accusations as another trial on the journey towards purification that he needed to undergo. In January 1930, Father Faustino was transferred to the parish of Our Lady of Snows, Rashol. He accepted the transfer without any hesitation. The people here lacked basic education as they were farmers and people who lived for others. Under the guidance of his parish priest, he again concentrated on the catechism classes and other pastoral activities which led to a spiritual growth of the parish. In this modern age, can you imagine any priest working in the same place for 40 years? Unbelievable! Who's the one, may I know? None other than Father Faustino. Just imagine, 40 years of service without a complaint on his lips? Surprised at his appointment as the parish priest of Sankwal, he totally relied on God's help and gave himself totally for the service of the people with great earnest zeal and enthusiasm. He was happy to be in the village where a missionary of the stature of Saint Joseph Vaz had lived. The life of the Apostle of Ceylon and Kanara had always made deep impression on him and he began to take keen interest in the cause of beatification of this servant of God. Father Faustino is fondly remembered as a shepherd to a flock. He reformed the entire Sankwal village and instilled in them the seed of faith and drew them into the fold of the Lord. He not only cared for the Christians, but he cared for the people of other faiths too. He sacrificed himself for the Sankwal villagers and the church. He spent long hours in the confessional. He was all available for confessions. Father Faustino preached and practiced what he believed. He encouraged the people to do their regular confessions. He regularized marriages and baptized the children. He catered to all the sacraments and he believed in the power of them. He had great love for the Blessed Sacrament. He strengthened the bonds of brotherhood 
and created an awareness that every child is a child of God. Father Faustino was an ardent lover of the farmers. He lovingly patched up the enmities in the families so that they could live in love and unity. In spite of his busy schedule, he always had time for prayers. Prayer was his outstanding quality that promoted him to remain rooted in the love of Christ. Love Christ and give Christ to others. Prayer was his strength and weapon against all hardships and dangers. Jesus, my Lord and God, was his favorite ejaculatory prayer. A man of sacrifice and always humble in his ways, a lover of Mother Mary, would recite the rosary on his knees and also taught the sisters to do the same. He went about doing good, for God was with him. Father Faustino was a man of God, set apart for others. He did have his own limitations, weaknesses, and one could hear him saying, In my weakness, O God, you show me your power. A man who lived a life of utter poverty found a model of obedience in the Holy Family of Nazareth too. He was a missionary who cared for the souls, an instrument of communion and bridged the gap between the poor and rich. Father Faustino's main preoccupation was salvation of souls. Founders are God's instruments in providing for the needs of the church at different times and in different circumstances. Father Faustino realized that there was a painful lacuna in the ecclesiastical setup of the Archdiocese of Goa. There were no religious institutions to help and make particular contribution in the spread of faith among the non-Christians to the education of the youth and the various kinds of apostolates. Religious congregations and orders had been banned or suppressed first in Portugal and then in its colonies by the then atheistic Prime Minister of Portugal, Dom Afonso da Costa. The exodus from Goa had lasted too long. Father Faustino strongly felt the need for religious institutes to care for orphans and the destitutes the aged and the socially marginalized. With the rise of Oliveira Salazar as Prime Minister and with Estado Novo in 1928, the church and its colonies could breathe more freely now. Perceiving the winds of change, he began mobilizing opinion in the ecclesiastic circles for the re-establishment of religious orders. So came in the Franciscan missionary brothers who began their ministry of orphanage for boys in Duleir. It is said that Father Faustino was carrying stones on his own shoulders to build the house for the brothers. He also opened a rest house for priests at Duleir and the seminary Nivas for the candidates. But Father Faustino was not satisfied. He sensed that our sons and daughters were going outside Goa to join religious orders because the mother houses of these convents were outside Goa. And for that reason, there should be a religious order in Goa. During the century of anti-religious domination, there were no religious congregations for women in Goa. Father Faustino felt a need for the religious congregation of women in Goa and began corresponding with Monsignor Frank from Bangalore. 
In spite of his transfer to Rashol, he never let go the thought of starting a new congregation for women. He discussed with Reverend Monsignor Raymond Mascarenas, the vicar general of the diocese and the founder of the congregation of the Little Flower of Bethany. He sent the first batch of girls for their formation and studies to Mangalore. Father Faustino, a zealous diocesan priest, pastor of the parish of San Qual, Goa, seized this opportunity to move towards the execution of a cherished project that he had been harboring in his mind and heart for quite a number of years. Light dispels darkness. Father Faustino, the true light, a visionary pastor, dispelled the darkness by starting the congregation of the Sisters of Holy Family of Nazareth. Like a small seed growing on a fertile soil, the SFNs have branched out into a beautiful tree, yielding harvests in abundance to every nook and corner of the earth. Father Faustino was constantly instructing and encouraging the sisters to be selfless, prayerful and committed always available and ready to reach out to the poor and needy. Father Faustino answered the Lord's call to be in his bosom forever on the 26th of March 1975. Even in his last days he was always at the service of others. A lover of souls is always there for us, interceding to keep the flame of love burning. The SFN's work in different parts of India and render service to the poor through their various ministries. The Vision Mission Statement Empowered by the providential love of God, strengthened by faith and trust, and sustained by prayer, and expressed through selfless love, our mission is to liberate the poor. Service to the poor is the charism of the Congregation of the Sisters of Holy Family of Nazareth. The sisters feel joy in rendering service to the poor. The SFNs with the Holy Family as their model strive to live joyously a life of total dedication, availability, humble service to others and become lights to others. The first pillars of the congregation, Mother Edith, Mother Joanna, Mother Nativity and Mother Josephine. On June 16, 1935, the first batch of founding sisters arrived Goa. They were the foundation stones of the new congregation in the Archdiocese of Goa. It was a great day of rejoicing and celebration. It began at the Mother House at Sankwal and spread to different corners of the earth. Today, we proudly hail a young and dynamic Sister Alvita Gurjan, the Superior General of the Congregation of Holy Family of Nazareth, who holds the torch burning with her enthusiastic counsellors and the fatherly guidance of Archbishop Philip Neri Ferrao. It is with their guidance and direction that they are leading the flock on the path to holiness. Today, as we celebrate 125 years of the birth anniversary of Father Founder, we salute our Founder and thank God and the Church for His marvelous gift to us. 
Along with Sister Alvita Gurjao and her team of counselors, the SFNs with their various ministries are on their journey to lead the people to God. Holistic formation is our goal and the yes professed at the first profession is confirmed in the final and silver jubilees with inspiring words of Mother Mary, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. School Apostolate Inflaming the young to be strong future pillars to education, our sisters strive hard and give their best in this field of education. Let the little children come to me, for it is to search the kingdom of God belongs. Father Faustino was an ardent lover of children, and he saw that the sisters took good care of them. In the boarding houses, sisters were to pay special attention to their education, discipline and spiritual life. Pastoral Ministries, Family Apostolates, Catechism, Altar Servers, Distribution of Communion, Small Christian Communities, Animating Choir, Youth Ministries, Prison Ministry, etc. The harvest is wide but the laborers are few. The Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. The SFNs work in the social field and are the voice of the voiceless, seeking justice and their rights for the poor and marginalized. They stand as hope through their various ministries of educating the women teaching tailoring and embroidery, flower making, cookery classes, etc. Sisters reach out to the poor and needy in the missions, educating the children, visiting the families, guiding them, teaching catechism, taking care of their children by keeping in the boardings and reaching out to them in times of troubles and difficulties. Come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. The SFNs give a listening ear to the old and abandoned. They help the old live gracefully and die peacefully. Today, the SFNs are also into the field of media and education. As they use modern technology, and are ambassadors and heralds of the good news on the path to holiness. With the Holy Family as the model of communication and Father Founder as a great communicator, all the SFNs march forward to keep the flame of His love burning forever. In the name of Jesus Christ we live As a fans glorify His name We are the handmaids of the Lord Yet to the Master's call The dawn is bright, we are full of hope The saints of love to sow And when the sun is gone to rest The little saints will grow It's Jamie Trent, no looking back Land. We'll walk to the promised land. We'll
Let's go to the promised land.